Earlier you saw how you can select one particular cell in your data frame using both dot at as well as dot i at. But you must be thinking this is a redundant function. Right? Using dot i lock also you can select one single cell. Why are we even having dot at and dot i at? The reason is if you use dot at and dot i at to select one data, one data point in your data frame, that activity is much more faster than doing it with either dot i lock or dot lock. So in this example, in this coming examples in this video, we are going to see various scenarios to do a certain task and compare the speed of doing that task using various different functions. All right. First, what we are going to do is I'm going to create a data frame like this. We have created a data frame that has three columns A, B and C. So this is created. Now what we are also going to do is now here in this one, there is 10,000 rows in this particular data frame, right? Now what we are going to do is we are going to compute the hypotenuse considering column A and column B represents the two sides of a right handed triangle. Say this is A, this is B. We want to compute C. The formula of C is nothing but C equal to root of A square plus B square. C is nothing but the hypotenuse of a right angle triangle. All right. This is what we want to compute. Now ignore the values in this. We are going to replace the values of C, the C column in all the rows of this data frame. So to do that, I'm going to first define this particular function, which is hypotenuse. This returns the hypotenuse given two sides of the right handed triangle. Now let's run this logic through using df dot lock, then df dot at, then df dot i at. All these we will try out. So let's get to it. Define the function. Now in first step, I'm going to iterate through all the rows of your data frame df. Then in column C, I'm going to assign hypotenuse of A and B. First, I'm extracting that particular cell A and that particular cell in column B. All right. Let's see how long it takes. So that took us 4 minutes, 29 seconds. All right. Let's do the same thing with df dot at. So this is taking us 393 milliseconds. You see the difference, right? A large difference, right? Let's do this again with df dot i at. This is slightly slower than df dot at. So this one is the fastest. df dot at is the fastest. The time taken to run these functions can depend on the configuration of your machine. But generally df dot at is faster than df dot i at and that is faster than df dot lock and i lock. That's my observation at least. Now, so the fastest time here is 393 milliseconds. You don't have to go through all of this. You can use vectorization directly to compute your C column, right? Here, one way of doing vectorization is you compute your hypotenuse like this and do a square root. This is one way. Another way is use df dot i lock to select your column and then do the computation. So clearly here itself, you can clearly see that this is the fastest. This is even faster than using dot at function, right? This is the fastest. Let's do the same with this guy. This is even faster than this type of vectorization. So when it comes to doing computations on columns, vectorization is usually the fastest method. Then comes at, then comes i at, then comes your lock and i lock. And even within vectorization, using your dot lock notation to select your column, that is even faster. So what is the takeaway from this? If you were to iterate through the different rows of your data frame to do a computation, sometimes all different types of computations may not be possible using vectorization. You might be forced to go for at or dot i at, right? In such scenario alone, go for either at or i at. Otherwise, try to do all your computations using vectorization like how we are doing here.